there Blues Cats, Eric Andreas, your guitar sage here, and today I thought I would make a lesson on what I thought were the top five things that every aspiring blues guitarist should know, okay? Now, there's a lot to know about blues. It's actually out of all the genres, uh, one of the ones that can be played the most simple, but it can also be played pretty complex. Pretty complexly. Is that a word? Complexly? Sure, I'm using it. Um, it can be played uh, similar to the way jazz players think. Um, there's, you know, the whole gamut. You can see someone playing a l very simple blues all the way up to, to uh, you know, jazz blues players or um, just straight up blues players but are playing with such technique and such licks and what have you as uh, Stevie Ray Vaughan. Uh, I mean, there's just the gamut is, is huge, but every single blues player needs to know these things. If you've been playing for a while, you're, you will agree with me on these. And if you haven't, then you need to listen, you need to, to understand these, okay? So um, the first thing is, is that you need to have an understanding of the 12-bar blues progression. You've heard this before, it goes like... Uh you've heard this before, right? Sure. I won't play the whole thing for you, but the 12 bar blues progression is a 12 bar or 12 measure chord progression that is made up of three chords known as the one, four, and five chords, okay? Those are based on some other musical theory that you don't have to know today. But usually there's only three chords in it and, uh, and it's a very simple chord progression. It's a very structured and uh, logical chord progression, and it's why it, it makes up the bulk of blues. In fact, probably 99% of, of blues chord progressions are based off of the 12 bar, the 12 bar blues, okay? Um, okay, and I could, I could go down a list of songs um, a mile long that would be song, every song that you would you would know them and they're based on the 12 bar blues so you have to know more about that since I'm going over five things today I can't go into detail with you but if you want to know more about the 12 bar blues click right here and that will give you more information about um, several videos that I have actually tell you what instead of that type in your guitar sage 12 bar blues then you're gonna get all the videos that I've done just type in 12 bar actually your guitar sage 12 bar that will help you, okay? All right, so, um, and by the way, as we go down these, um, I'm gonna give you videos that, and other resources that I have here on YouTube, so in case you love um, being distracted by pranks and booby girls and uh, cat tricks and stuff like that, then you can stay on YouTube. But if you wanna get down to the nitty gritty and really learn about blues, go to the Unstoppable Guitar System. The link is below. You can get in there for one buck and, um, and it will teach you all of this and more. I have a whole system on blues in there as well. Okay, now, um, so with 12 bar blues, first thing you gotta know, um, if you, so well, something else I wanna tell you about because this is gonna address the next thing I'm gonna show you is uh, blues form one. You need to know that. Um, I'm gonna show it to you here really quickly, but if you want the actual form, you wanna be able to look at it and move it all across the fretboard and that sort of thing, get the free ebook at your guitar stage. It also has some bits about 12 bar blues in there as well. So let's talk about what that form looks like right here. And um, like I said, you can get the free ebook and that'll help. By the way, if you do that, I give these books away uh, several times a year on Amazon. So um, just letting you know what I got there. Okay, so at the fifth fret here, uh, what I want you to do is put your first finger and I'm gonna name out the, the, the fingers that I want you to play, okay? So for the low E string here, the sixth string, I want you to play string uh, fingers one and four. Okay, one, two, three, one, three, one, three, four, one, four, one, four. So it should sound like this. Okay, now why is it that we need to know that form? Because probably 95% of the solos that are out there are going to be based or have some sort of amount of lickage, 
of soloing of licks that are in this form, okay? So it's the one that everybody learns in the beginning because it, every your hand just falls in place. The notes fall right underneath where your fingers should be, okay? So that's what I call uh, blues form one. Really important to know if you're interested in lead guitar, okay? Now, boogie woogie licks, okay? This is a basic boogie woogie lick that goes like this. Now we can get more complex. We can do all sorts of things like that, but if you want more information about boogie woogie licks, click right here, or you can type in your guitar stage boogie and you'll find that same uh, video or videos. I'm not sure how many I have out there, um, but you may even find some with me dancing, some disco dancing. That's not true, I'm just joshing you. Okay, so uh, Boogie Woogie Licks, right? We can use this for our 12 bar blues and we can use it to really start sounding cool, okay? So you gotta know that. Um, now, as far as lead guitar, if you're going to be playing some lead guitar and you're gonna be doing those, um, that uh, form one, we gotta know bending and vibrato. That's form five. So the bending part is when basically instead of sliding up to a note, we bend up to a note, okay? And so what we do, what we're doing is we're taking a string and we're we're picking it and then we're pushing it across the fretboard, which is gonna change the pitch. And so what we're doing is we're staying within the specific scale, so the notes are sounding nice, but blues really lends itself to this bending type of sound because it's like a soulful type of music, right? It's the blues, it's sad, um, or it's supposed to be if you're doing it right, okay? So that bending is really gonna help. Um, if you need more information about that, I'm sure I have some stuff. Again, if you like the cats and the and the boobies and the and the pranks and all that stuff here on YouTube, then you could stay within this realm. Otherwise, the the pro videos are at uh, Unstoppable Guitar System. You can check that out. Okay, and I have uh, I'm pretty sure I have videos for bending on in both those places. Okay, and vibrato is the last thing. Uh, vibrato, we gotta have vibrato. You can't play a blues without vibrato, or it'll sound like this. Some, gotta have some vibrato. So we gotta have some vibrato for it to sound nice, right? So vibrato is basically when you're bending a note, but you're doing it back and forth. So you're bringing it always back to the original pitch, okay? Now, Basically what you're wanting to do is when you're playing a note, um, you want to take it and you want to move it across like you would a bend, but you want to come back to zero all the time. And what I mean by that is if this note, without me bending it, is at zero, then when I bend it, it's going out of pitch. So if I'm going to have a proper vibrato, there needs to be a center, and there needs to be a, a note that we're doing this vibrato based upon. So what happens a lot of times with people in the beginning is they'll, uh, when, they're, when they're doing some sort of vibrato, they'll actually be bending the note. And so yes, we are bending a note when we're, when we're doing vibrato, but we're always coming back to zero. And so what happens is a lot of times people will, will do a bend and they'll never come back to zero, which changes the pitch. So basically, if I, were to, if I was to do something like, um, you know, that's ba 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 ba. That note you can hear, even though I'm using vibrato. Ba, ba, I'm not sure why I went up an octave. Ba, 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 ba. You know, it's like you know what I'm playing there. But if I was, oftentimes in the beginning, people will go. They'll kind of give it this bend, and they will never come back to zero. So a great way to practice your bending is to just. Be nice and relaxed, and then move the string back and forth. 
or up and down, okay? Always come back, always coming back to the center. Now in the beginning, it'll be, it'll sound, it'll sound like you're bending the note, but in time, that'll, come fa that'll become faster, and you will have different types of vibrato, like B.B. King, and like Angus Young. So there's different types of vibrato depending on how fast or how uh, wide the vibrato is. Okay, my friends, that is the five things that you need to know that every blues guitar player needs to know. Again, I'm Eric Andreas, your guitar sage. I've done this for a long time. I teach. I've taught thousands of folks and millions of people on the web. Um, if you need to know more about blues guitar or any types of any type of guitar for that matter, uh, make sure you go to yourguitarsage.com. Get the free ebook, unstoppableguitarsystem.com. You can get in there for one dollar, and you'll have. You'll be privy to all my videos and live lessons with me once a month. That's right. All right. Hey, I'm on Facebook and Twitter and all that good stuff, so I can answer your questions there or here in the comments. So please let me know how I can help. I want to help you. Anybody can play guitar. If you set your mind to it, you've got the resources and you practice. All right. Be kind to one another. Spay and neuter your animals. We can change this world one person at a time, starting with ourselves. See ya.